Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again in today's video. An entitled Karen claims she owns an entire national park, wants me trespassed and then slaps my son. Here is what happened. And the title story starts like this. Me and my family love to go swimming. We are always looking for excuses to head to the local water park or hit the beach the second it gets warm enough and once there, we will spend the entire day in the water. Hell, we would even have our lunch in the water if we could. Now, as good as swimming in a pool is, the chemicals they put in the water can make a pleasant swim turn into a torturous eye-burning time that I would rather not want to have to deal with, so we always hit the lakes, coasts and whatnot as much as possible. There's just something about swimming in fresh water that really makes you feel like you are close to nature. Most of the time when we go away somewhere, we will check out the local area for decent places to swim, mostly lakes and sometimes the odd river. We have never had any problems before and when we swim canals and rivers we often meet some pretty decent people. All until this one time. So we decided to go away for a little weekend break. There was me, my wife and our 7 year old son. We came across a company that rented out wood cabins in the heart of a national forest park. What sold us was how it boasted it had real bison roaming the enclosed fields and an area where you can walk amongst the deer and feed them from your hand. My son loved that idea the most so we set off looking forward to a lovely little family break but we were never to know what was to come next. The cabin was cozy enough, literally just a tiny shed that just about squeezed in a sad looking sofa in front of a fireplace and two rooms with no room to walk around in. You were literally walking on the beds the second you opened the doors. It didn't bother me so much, we were only there for one night. The first day went by nice enough. We walked around the park, saw the bison and there were quite a few of them too, a whole herd. We fed the deer, saw lots of river otters, red foxes and the visitor center had these adorable field mice in a pretty big glass box terrarium. My son loved it and he kept reciting the Gruffalo. We spent the night outside the cabin, mostly because it was just too small to just sit around and relax in. We were also lucky that it wasn't raining. So then we set up a little campfire and spent the night making s'mores and roasting sausages. The only thing that ruined the end of the first day was that it was too cloudy for us to see the stars. If only the second day went as well as the first one. We got up, had breakfast and then got ourselves to go for a nice morning swim in a large river that ran through the center of the park. We are not self-entitled a-holes, we checked with the staff at the visitor center first and they said the river was safe to swim in, the areas that had the river otters were much further away from us. In a section of part to stop people and boars from casually encroaching on their dens or nest, I cannot quite remember what they are called. Satisfied that we were going to go for a nice morning swim, we head on out to the river, which was only a 20 minute walk from the cabin. Around the lake, everything started off great, we slowly meandered along the river, met some friendly people hiking along the riverbank, a couple kayakers and the like. After a couple of hours of swimming, we started to see houses and there was a whole street built up along the riverbank, most of them backed up against the water and had their own jetties and the like. When we came to the end of the row of houses, we met the person who lived there, chilling on his decking, enjoying the morning. We waved and said hi and he said to us after the usual pleasantries and greetings, be careful of Karen down the end, pointing back the way we came. She gets funny about people swimming in the river. I think it's odd, but I can understand. Who wants strangers swimming right by their back door? But in the end, she must have known what was gonna happen moving there in the first place. Laughing it off, we continue on along the river for a little longer before we decide to turn around and start heading back and that was when we saw her, this nasty looking, hunched over troll of a woman whose horrific eyes rested upon us pretty much as soon as that last house came into view. She started yelling at us almost immediately. I could not hear what she was saying as we were too far away and splashing around a fair bit but when we got closer it was very clear that the woman was having a great deal of trouble keeping her anger in check. She was yelling something about how we were not allowed to swim in the river and whatnot. We could have just swam on but with this being my first real encounter with a Karen in the wild I didn't know the right course of action. So we pause, I step out of the river and try and have a grown up conversation about how we were allowed to swim in the river. I knew we were allowed to swim the river as I had spoken to the staff and they said it was fine. It was hard to get in a word as Karen was constantly trying to talk over me and pretty much ignoring everything I was saying. This is my river, I didn't give you permission, I could have you charged with trespassing, she was ranting. 
I knew she was talking utter garbage, but trying to get her to see any sort of reason was like trying to push a truck uphill. In the end, I called her bluff and told her to call the cops then, because I was going nowhere and was gonna continue swimming in the lake. I own the national park, she ranted on. I will have you arrested and you will have to pay a fine to me, just like everyone else. I goaded her to the point where she did actually end up calling the police and I went back to the river. Now, everyone with kids will tell you, kids have no filter nor any perception of what is and is not appropriate to say around others. I returned to my family where my wife asked me what was going on and I told her that Karen was being a bloody witch. When the police showed up a few hours later, we had to talk to them and give them a statement. They looked rather fed up, probably not the first time they had to deal with Karen, but the worst thing happened when they asked what was going on and my 7 year old, no word of a lie, tells the police that Karen was being a witch. My jaw dropped, but that was nothing compared to Karen's reaction as she fumed bright red and she slapped my seven-year-old son. This was no tap on the cheek, this was a hand of God dealing righteous fury to my son, who was sent sprawling to the ground. Me and the police jumped into action, only I was just a little faster and slugged Karen square in the side of the head. She would have faceplanted the floor if the police had not already been moving to arrest her. I think that was lucky on my part, because if she had headbutted the floor and got seriously hurt, I could have been in trouble. As it stood, me and Karen got carted off to the local station, I was left to sweat it out for quite a few hours, panicking that I had just made a grievous error and looking back on it now, I would have done the same thing. I'm not gonna let anyone get away with hitting my son, not for any reason and definitely not for telling the truth. Some time goes by before the police finally come to me and ask me something completely unexpected. Do you wish to press charges, sir? He asked me. I was confused and asked the police if I was in trouble for hitting Karen and the police said that while I should not have hit her, it was understandable and done in self-defense. So yeah, I pressed charges, get some reparations and Karen was evicted from the house to prevent her from harassing anyone else. And yeah, ripe stars, I'm really glad that Karen got what she deserved in the end because some of these rich, entitled Karens really go too far. If you have ever had any run-ins with Karens in real life, then please let me know in the comments and feel free to share your story. The next one is another revenge story. This happened many years ago, but it popped into my head earlier, so I thought I would share. Back in 1994, I bought a 1989 Ford Escort as a work beater to drive the 25 miles each way back and forth to work. It was in good shape and got great mileage, 40 miles per gallon, because it was a 4-speed manual. I try to take care of my vehicles, but I'm not overly anal about them, and when somebody dings it up because they are careless, it chaps my butt. One day before work, I worked second shift, I went to Best Buy to pick up the then brand new corn CD. I bought the CD and went out to my car to open it and give it a listen. As I was unwrapping it, a lady in a brand new Ford Taurus with paper plates pulled into the parking spot on my right. She flings open her door and bangs the edge of her door into the middle of my passenger door. It did not hit real hard, but it was enough that I knew it had to have left a small dent or paint chip. I looked up at her, expecting her to apologize, but instead she just gave me a crappy look, closed her door and walked away. That instantly pissed me off. I decided if she wanted to act like an entitled Karen, I was gonna teach her a lesson. I waited until she was about 75 feet away, then leaned over and unlatched my passenger door. I twisted my body in the seat, lifted my right leg over the shifter and then proceeded to kick my passenger door open as hard as I could into her door. It hit so hard it left a crease in her door. No amount of touch-up paint was gonna fix it. It was so loud she turned around to see what happened, immediately realizing that I had bashed my door into hers and came marching her fat ass back towards her car swearing up a storm at me. I just started up my car and drove forward out of my parking space before she got closer than 10 feet to my car. I gave her a fake smile, a quick wave and a couple beeps of the horn as I drove away while she stood there fuming and cussing up a storm. And the next one is another revenge story. My husband passed away two years ago, he was a remodeler who had a broad list of clients for a time to help out the adult daughters, let's call her Kiki, or Kiki, I'm not sure, of my good friend of 42 years, Amy. He would hire her as a helper on some of his larger remodeling projects and during that time Kay would occasionally borrow things for her own projects, a portable CD player, a pair of channel locks, a winch and a come along. Also a table saw, a chainsaw, a Greco card painter's prayer and an air compressor and nail gun. 
They were all borrowed clean, in working order, in good condition, with all relevant parts included. Every single one of them was returned with great delays, all broken and missing significant parts. As well as a crap ton of excuses. Over two years, Kiki managed to cost him nearly $5,000 in losses. Finally, he also quit hiring her as a helper because he caught her stealing from one of his clients and forced her to put the item she took right back and then kicked her off the job immediately. Last September, I was visiting Amy and Kiki was there and then Kiki hit me up for what she called her promised inheritance, which was the first I ever heard about it. Given that my hubby and I spent the 8 years of his terminal illness talking about what he wanted after his death, given that he gifted things of his that he wanted friends to have before he died, I knew damn well he didn't intend for Kiki to have anything, my husband left no will. Amy knew that my hubby had quit lending her tools after getting the card paint sprayer back. It was a $1,200 purchase and was less than 4 months old when it was borrowed and returned broken in ways the warranty wouldn't cover. Amy also knew Kiki's attempted theft had caused him to refuse to have her work on anything with him for any reason. Amy was also a victim of her daughter stealing from her as well. Now our state is a community property state. When a spouse dies without a will, only the surviving spouse inherits, so Amy told her daughter to back off and I got the bright idea of how I was gonna handle getting rid of all that broken stuff which was still taking up room in the tool shed. So I told her I would be sure to pick something out for her even though her own behavior was the root cause of the bad blood between herself and my husband. So the next day, with Amy's help, I dropped off all the broken tools and the busted up CD player Kiki borrowed from my hubby at her apartment. Kiki wanted to know what I expected her to do with all of it. I told her that I expected her to do with them whatever it was she had expected my hubby to do with them after she returned them in the condition they were in. Now she is the proud owner of a bunch of useless tools and I gotta reclaim nearly 35 square foot of space in what is now my tool shed. And the next one is a story from r slash am I the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for kidnapping my own child? I, 29 female, recently started working again after having my daughter 4 months old. Daycare is too expensive, so my husband, 35 male, reluctantly agreed to stay at home. It's important to know that he has been unemployed since 2021, he receives benefits, it's also important to know that he is extremely lazy. He does not cook, clean or help out in any way. I was nervous about leaving her home with her father, but I had no choice. When I came back from work, she was clean and sleeping. The next few times I came home, he was either playing with her, feeding her or out for a walk with her. I was happy. A few days ago my neighbor told me that as soon as I leave the baby cries and she cries for hours. My neighbor said that she knocked on our door and he finally answered. He was sleeping, I concluded that he sleeps all day and night. Before I come home he pretends to care for her, I decided to take the day off work, I left home at my regular time. Waited 30 minutes and then went home. Sure enough he was knocked out sleeping with his stupid noise cancelling headphones on. I went to my daughter's room, scooped her up and took her to my friend's house. I waited about 2 hours and I finally called him to tell him that I was coming home early. He called me back saying that he cannot find the baby. He told me he was gonna call the police but before he did I told him what I did. He called me an a-hole and a lot of other words too. When I got home his mother was there calming his nerves because he has a panic attack. She also called me an a-hole. My husband decided to sleep at her house. Family members are telling me now that I'm a terrible person, I know that it was extreme but I don't know if I would consider myself to be an a-hole. And yeah, ripe stars, please let me know in the comments what you think about this. Do you think that OP is the a-hole in this case for essentially kidnapping her kid or not? I would say OP is definitely not the a-hole, the a-hole is the husband here. He is clearly not capable of taking care of this child and OP really needs to consider what is gonna happen in the future in this relationship. Clearly she cannot leave the kid alone with her husband. Either way, comment number one, sleeping with noise cancelling headphones as the only adult in the home caring for a 4 months old, absolutely not the a-hole. Comment number two, not the a-hole, he is not an appropriate caretaker for your child and if I were you, I would be reconsidering the relationship completely. Update, the last few days have been crazy. Once I finally told everyone what happened, many took my side. My ex-husband and mother-in-law still think I'm a jerk. My friend allowed my daughter and I to move in with her. Which is nice by the way, because we were living in a 
bad area before, so this can be a fresh start. My ex-husband has not asked to see my daughter for the past week. Online, he is saying how I ruined his youth by trapping him with a baby. I don't care anymore. I'm in a nice routine with my daughter. I took her to the hospital and they found signs of neglect. I explained the situation. And the doctor advised me to press charges against my ex-husband. I think I will, but I'm safe and my daughter is safe. That's all that matters. The next one is titled, Just Following Directions Here. This happened around the early 2000s when I was working for my uncle's fencing company. So, customer, a-hole, purchased a newly constructed home, cookie cutter, everything builder grade, the land plots were divided only by fluorescent orange marking spray paint, which is hardly official. My uncle submitted a bid per customer A's request and we got the project. We had the lowest bid around $1200 lower than the competition. The caveat, we collect full payment up front, not a deal breaker for customers as we accept credit card payments, this way both parties are protected from fraud. During that time my uncle had just left his previous job as a land surveyor, his speciality property line surveying. The estimated property line marked by the above mentioned orange spray paint was nearly two feet off on one side of customer A's property. My uncle makes the necessary adjustments and markings and we start digging the post holes. Customer A makes a surprise job site visit slash inspection. He sees our post holes and turns beet red. He rushes towards us and starts dropping f-bombs left and right. What the f are you idiots doing? You're giving away a part of my property to my neighbor. Can't you guys see the bright orange marking on the dirt? I want you geniuses to fill up these holes ASAP and dig right where the orange lines are. I want my fence directly on top of the orange lines. I just about lost it and was about to get in customer A's face. My uncle stops me and he tries to explain. The orange lines are off, customer A. I'm the one paying here, not you, so you follow my effing directions. Uncle, please let me explain. Customer A, no, 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 I have paid you in full. You're not paid to explain. You're paid to build my fence directly exactly the way I want it, where I want it, and this conversation is over. He drives off and my uncle looks at me with a malicious smile. OP, let's grab an early lunch and then we will give him what he wants. I shrug. Over lunch he calls my aunt, his secretary, to have her draft a new JOC slash work order aka contract. In it it's explicitly and officially noted that the fence will be erected 22 inches east of the official property line and that the customer will shoulder full responsibility and liability should a conflict arise either with their future new neighbor, the home next door was still unsold at that point, or any other party. My aunt emails the contract to customer A, my uncle and I have our two martini lunch hour, aunt calls and says customer A has signed and emailed the new contract back to her. And now that we have a paper trail, we go back to the site and continue working. That same afternoon customer A pays us another visit and says, just checking to see if you decided to follow my instructions. You idiots didn't wait for me to sign the new contract before resuming work, did you? Me? We sure did. As he turned around to leave I can hear him mouth something off. Effin' idiots. Upon completion, three days later he signs off that the work was satisfactory. He was still in a-hole mode refusing to acknowledge either my uncle or I when we thanked him for his business. Four months later he contacts my uncle again requesting for him to bid on a new project. And yeah, you guessed it, to move the existing fence on top of the official property line. We gave him an unreasonably high bid and still secured the project. This time around he was a teddy bear throughout the entire project. Project. Neighbor built an illegal fence through my farmland and denied me access to my property. So I live in a smaller city in Albania. Our neighborhood is a mix of tiny houses and traditional houses that are pretty simple and dainty. Our neighborhood is nothing fancy but it is quiet and comfortable. Off to the side of the neighborhood there is a huge field. Because my house is at the end of the street I actually own a good chunk of this field. It's considered a part of my backyard. I don't really do much with this piece of land as I live alone. I have accumulated a small garden but have actually been planning to turn it into some sort of small farm or something. I don't really know. 
In this part of town you cannot build fences on your property because we are a small village basically and kind of out in the country. The general rule is that everyone should have access to go in and out of the land as they please. You must get permission to build any kind of gate and or fence and must have a valid reason. For example, if you are living on a big piece of property and decide to start a farm, you can plan with the city on how to properly build and install the fence. But other than reasons like that, you cannot have a fence. So there is this old guy who lives in the neighborhood who is always causing problems. He is known to not be so friendly and to do weird things just to make some quick money. It came to several of the neighbors attention that he was wanting to buy a part of the field that sat at the end of the street. His house was behind mine and was the second closest to the field. Our houses sat in a sort of zigzag formation, so even though I was closer to the field, he also had access to it. The issue is that he wanted to buy a part of the field, a bigger piece than I owned, and build more small houses and then rent them out. Now, I hate to sound like older generations, but this would just crowd up the neighborhood so much. We were a small and quiet neighborhood and plus you would have to cram pack houses in the field if you wanted to have more than three or four. But much to everyone's dismay, this elderly gentleman bought a section of the field. Shortly after it was confirmed that he bought a part of the field, a fence was being built. Most of us could figure out what he was doing right away. He was building a fence to section off part of the land to use to build other properties on. However, with the way that he was building this fence, I could not enter any part of the land that I actually owned unless it was through a small pathway next to my house. I was obviously terribly upset about this because I knew two things. Number one, the fence he was building was surely illegal, there was no way in hell that the city would approve of it. And number two, he was building this fence for his own benefit through my property, not for the neighborhood nor his neighbors. So although it may seem petty or extreme, me and another neighbor got together and cut down his fence. We knew that he would not call authorities on us because that would mean he would have to admit he did not have the proper permits or licenses for the fence. So we figured we would tear down the fence, throw the scraps away and be done with it. However, much to our surprise, the guy actually did not say anything to us and started up the production of his fence once again. This time we were going to take more action and with a way that we knew he would not be able to rebuild it. One of the neighbors across the streets assisted in running a farm across town, because of this he had some connections and was able to get his hands on some manure. He dumped the manure along the fence line on my property and made sure it was right up against the entitled neighbor's fence. The smell was sure to be awful, but on top of that we reported to the police that we thought an illegal fence was being set up. The police came out and concluded that the fence was indeed being built illegally and that he would have to tear it down and pay a fine. And because he was caught building the fence illegally, the city would not consider any future plans he had for building the fence. He actually tried to complain and report us for the manure and the smell, but I simply told the police officers that I let my friend store the manure on the field until he could take it to the farm. And ripe stars, if you still enjoy the stories about crazy neighbors and entitled people, then I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and maybe even like the video because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much in advance. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.